everyone, it's Christopher, AKA the Tattooed Quilter, and I'm so excited to be here at Fat Quarter Shop to bring you a machine binding tutorial. It's super easy, super fun. So the supplies you're gonna need for machine binding are pretty basic. You need some thread, and I'm using RFL 50 weight uh, in white here because it matches my project. Um, a lot of times I like to match the project, especially after you've quilted it, and so use the thread that you've done your quilting with because you're gonna, it'll disappear, but you might still see it a little bit. And we'll, you'll see what I'm saying when we get toward that step. You're gonna need your binding, of course. You're gonna need some wonder clips. And you're also gonna need a couple of different presser feet for your machine. So you're gonna need your quarter inch seam allowance presser foot. And you're also gonna need this handy dandy, what I like to call the zipper foot. I'm sure there's a technical term for it. Um, and each machine, I'm sure it's different. Um, but basically it's, it's a foot that has a little guide sort of in the middle there and you can see it right there and that's going to help us attach the binding to the top of our quilt when we get to that step but first we need to attach the quilt we need to attach the quilt binding to the top and what I like to do is with my binding is start with a nice tail like six to eight inches and I just kind of gauge sort of where my binding is going to go on my quilt and this helps me make sure that there's no binding seam um, in a corner because if you have a binding seam in a corner it makes pulling out those corners really tough and so far this looks pretty good I'm just kind of gauge it here make sure I have enough of a tail at the end again six to eight inches um, that way you have enough space to work with when you go to attach it at the very end Okay, so let's take this to our machine and start to sew down our binding on the top. I like to start toward a corner when I start to attach the binding to the top. And all you're doing, and there's no fancy stitch length or anything like that, this we're using our quarter inch uh, guide, our presser foot as our guide. And you're just gonna sew your binding down. And then I kind of slow down when I get to this corner because you want to stop about a quarter of an inch before you get to the corner. You can always mark it if you're not really comfortable. And then we're going to lift this up. And then you're just going to pivot. And, per and stitch off at an angle. So you're just really going from where you stop stitching that quarter of an inch all the way down. And then, so you can see there, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold your binding back to get that 90 degree angle. And then you're just gonna pull it back over. And I do a little double check to make sure that it's lined up. And you want it to be flush with the edge of your quilt. Okay. And then you're just gonna keep going. So you're going to start in that little corner there. And there's a lot of layers that you have to go through here, so it might take a little like coercing in there, but you'll get it. And again, we're just following that guide, our quarter inch guide. Lining up our, our quilt and our binding on the edge there. about to come up on another corner so we're going to repeat the same process we're going to get to our corner and stop a quarter of an inch off keep our needle down pivot and just sew off that corner Fold back, fold over, 
So we get that nice little 90 degree pocket in there so we can turn our binding around. Make sure that's all lined up there. Again, we're just following the edge of the quilt with the binding. Make sure everything is flat. We get to our corner here. Keep our needle down, lift our foot up, pivot, saw off that corner. fourth and final corner because we're about to oh no we got one more so line everything up another corner here. Repeat that process. All right, now we're on to our last corner. And this is where we're going to stop after we stitch this down a couple of stitches because we need to join our tails together. Okay. So we want to make sure that we have enough tail space and we're not sewing too far down. I'm going to go a couple of inches. Do a little back stitch number. Okay, and then take this to our cutting mat. So we have our two tails here, and you can see they overlap a lot. Um, and really, you're going to overlap this two and a quarter inches. And I see here I have a seam, so I might want to trim this off and cut this seam out. So let's see here. Two and a quarter inches. So lay your ruler up against the edge of your binding. Then take your other tail and come over two and a quarter inches and just cut it. Okay. Then you're going to pin this in place. So your right tail and your left tail have to meet. And there's a million different ways you can do this. This is the option that I found worked best for me. So right tail's laying over top of left tail lift it up, open it up, left tail, open up, overlap, right sides together. So it's sort of like a little dance. I'll go through it one more time. So left tail's laying down, right tail's on top of left tail, open up, open up, right sides together. And this is why it's important to have the tails because 
you need that room to be able to pull it. And then you're going to line them up, pin them in place, and I like to use a lot of pins for this. That way it doesn't really move on me. And I keep the head of the pin away from my body because that will help me know where I'm going to start sewing at when I sew these two together. And again, there's a million different methods of how to do this. This I found works best for me. Again, we're just keeping the tails lined up together there. One more pin should do the trick. Okay, and because I have the pin heads facing away from me, I know that I'm going to start stitching here and end down here on my machine. So let's take this to our machine. And this is the tricky part, because sometimes, it, depending on the quilt size, it can get a little bulky under here. But this actually looks pretty good. And then I'm going to... You're just going to sew from one point to the other point. And the nice thing is... Your machine has a guide that will kind of help help you um, go along. And as I'm going, I just like to remove the pins. You can sew over your pins if you want. I just find this is easier for me. And you're just sewing to get from one corner to the other corner. Now what you're going to do is you're going to trim this quarter inch away. You're going to trim the seam allowance away. And you can do that with scissors. You can do it with your rotary cutter. I oftentimes use my scissors just because it's such a small little thing to trim away. And you're just going to follow along. Closing up that seam. There's your... Lining up the binding with the quilt top. And then once you get to the end, give it a couple little back stitches. Now that you've sewn your binding down to the top, I like to just give it a good press. Um, it, some people say don't press it back because it'll stretch the binding out where this fold is at. But if you're gentle enough, it shouldn't stretch it out. And if you don't mind the stretched out binding on the back, that's totally fine. Um, I, I love how flat um, and crisp my bindings are. I love how that looks. So that's why I iron mine. Okay, so once you have that done, now we're going to use our binding clips. And you're going to laugh, but I love to use a lot of binding clips when I do machine binding. Now this technique, I will say, probably works better with mini quilts. I'm not sure about large quilts. I haven't done a large quilt this way. Um, but I, I find for mini quilts, this works really well for me. So I'm just taking my binding clip and I'm just clipping, I'm pulling my binding over from the front to the back. And about every inch or so, again, I'm using a lot, call me crazy, of our little wonder clips here. I like to call them binding clips because that's usually what I use them for. And again, I like my binding to be nice and flat and I love it to be right on the edge of the quilt. So that's why I pull and I sort of make sure everything um, is nice and flat and a good gauge if you're if you if you want it to be very consistent a good gauge is once you lay down your your wonder clips you'll see that they end all at the same point that's a good gauge to see if you're if everything is pretty accurate okay and i keep going until i get to the corner here and then what i do is i turn the quilt to face me Get that little thread in there. I usually tuck all my threads in. So I place my thumb here in the corner, making sure everything's nice and smooth and tight up against the edge of the quilt. 
and then I flip that binding over to create that 90 degree angle. And sometimes you have to futz with it until you get it um, just right. And I should mention this binding is two and a half inches before I fold it over. Um, sometimes you can um, do a two and a quarter inch binding, but I love a good two and a half. It gives me a little bit more room when I go to machine bind on the top. So we're just going to keep going here. And again, I'm using a, bi a binding, a wonder clip, a binding clip, whatever you want to call it. About every inch. And I do the whole quilt this way. Okay, so I've placed my wonder clips, or as I like to call them, binding clips around the whole mini quilt. And you can see that I use a lot. Um, but I like it because it holds everything down and nothing's really going to shift. I'm not sure, again, that you could use this for a larger quilt, but definitely for mini quilts, this is the way to go. So we're going to go to our sewing machine. And I already have on here um, the little zipper foot, as I was calling it, attached to my machine. And what you're going to do is you're just going to remove one binding clip. And you're going to place the, the foot down so that you can see. Basically, the edge of the binding that's stitched down already lines up with the edge of the zipper foot or stitch in the ditch foot, however you want to call it. And then I've adjusted the stitch length to be a larger stitch length, similar to how my quilting's done so that it all matches, and we're using matching thread. So if you, stitch, if you quilt it with white thread, you might want to use white thread to attach the binding. Or you can use something else if you want. And then I'm just going to drop my needle down just to make sure and I'm a little off there. So let me, let me pull that. You wanna make sure you don't pull that stitch out. There we go. So you wanna make sure that you're right on the money. Because if not, you're gonna stitch onto your binding. And I'm gonna um, just go super slow on this because I don't want to stitch on top of my binding. I can see it. Okay, and then once you get started, again, you're just using this guide of the zipper foot or the stitch in the ditch foot to follow along. Okay, and removing the wonder clips as you go. And once you get the hang of this, you can you can go a little faster. And you want to make sure that you're not catching the binding, or else that's a big no-no. Okay. Now we're getting to a corner. And what I like to do is just kind of hold it with my finger and make sure that the, there we go, it goes over the binding. And then I like to guide this with my hand um, because I want to make sure that I get right in that corner. Perfect. And sometimes you might have to wiggle it a little bit. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to um, move this. You're going to keep your machine needle down. And you're just going to pivot the quilt. Put your presser foot back down. And I'm just going to go ahead. Again, you want to make sure you're not catching your binding. There we go. Pretty good. Just keep going, removing your wonder clips as you go. Until we get down here and then I'm gonna use my hand to crank the machine the needle up and down so that I get right in that corner keep your needle down 
lift your presser foot, pivot the quilt. And sometimes I'll go back and give myself a, a little check to make sure that um, everything looks good on the back. And that looks pretty good. See, I, I caught that binding, the, uh, to, the angle is pretty good. And uh, you'll see there's a little bit of a lip here with the binding, um, and that's okay. Um, it's on the back side, and, and I like this way because it uh, I, I catch it when I'm stitching the binding down. If you you know think you can get it with a, a two and a quarter inch binding, you can totally do that. I don't feel confident enough that I could catch that, and so that's why I use the two and a half. And I actually don't mind the excess of the binding there, especially if this is a quilt that's going to be used. Okay, and then we just keep going. Making sure we're not catching our binding. Corner. We want to hold this down with our finger and then start to use the hand crank until we really get in that corner there. Okay. Lift our presser foot, pivot. Once you get the hang of it, you can go pretty quick. You know, I love how hand binding looks, but machine binding is super fast and it's really durable too, especially if you're gonna use this project over and over again. Okay, we get to our corner here. And we're almost done. Now once you get to the end, you might have a few um, excess threads hanging off here from how you, when you started. I just go ahead and, and cut those. And then as I get toward the end there, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give it a couple little back stitches and then cut it. And you're all done. How easy is that for machine binding? And I love that you don't see how you attach the binding on the top of the quilt. It completely disappears with using that stitch in the ditch or zipper foot. So there we have it, machine binding using the stitch in the ditch or your zipper foot. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can follow me at the Tattooed Quilter on Instagram or check out my website. You can also get the supplies for this project over at Fat Quarter Shop. We'll see you again soon.